action. Continuing here with the big conferences, we go over to the Pac-12 tournament as UCLA will be facing Colorado. UCLA here laying nine, total 133. Yeah, I think a, a lot of people are going to look at this line and, and think UCLA only laying nine. But if you remember just a couple weeks ago, UCLA was laying seven in Colorado and probably should have lost that game in Colorado. Uh, UCLA, uh, they shot 7% from three in that game. I, I don't think they're going to shoot 7% again. But here's the thing that I'm looking at. They slept walk when they got into Boulder. Why would they not sleepwalk here? They didn't play their best basketball. They don't have to have this in they don't have to have any sort of win here to solidify them in the NCAA tournament. It's an early game in Las Vegas. I just don't see UCLA waking up for this game. It's it's I started at eight, you've gone to eight and a half and you've gone to nine. I think that's more public than I think it is sharp. Um, again, on paper. It's you look at UCLA and they're obviously the better team. There's no way I can talk you out of that. But it just comes down to the spot. I don't see UCLA being ready to play this game. They were 18 and two in conference, so they'd never got tested in conference play. Colorado's coming off a good win against Washington in the same gym they're going to be playing UCLA in. I just kind of like the spot here again with Colorado. It's, it just seems like a lot of points here to be laying. All right, we got the cons here. Take Colorado here, plus the nine here against UCLA. Of course, UCLA, you know, uh, looking either at a two seed or maybe a one seed. Some say that if they run the table in the Pac-12 tournament, they can get that one seed because, you know, Cronin made a big uh, fuss about it. Uh, you know, a lot of the Pac-12 uh, coaches weren't happy with some of these brackets. And, uh, I, mean, I mean, look, you know, some of the Pac-12 teams had some poor out-of-conference out of showing. So, I think a lot of it's picking up here in some of these brackets. But, uh, you know, Colorado's a team that has a game under them. And sometimes that can help you. Here is especially in these tournaments, especially against a team that's pretty, as you said, pretty much already has their ticket signed into the dance. Yeah, it's just it's not a whole lot to look at as far as UCLA. Like, what are they playing for? They slept walk in, in in Boulder and beat them by four. They can sleep walk here and beat them by two or three. There's really no reason for them to want to get up and play this game other than to win the Pac-12 championship. But even then, like. They're not going to be tested at all. They were 18 and two in conference playing the regular season. They know what they're getting themselves into. So early, early in the tournament, I'm looking at fading UCLA. Now, the later we get down the line, I'm probably going to jump on board because we're going to see some, I think we're going to see some spreads that start dropping. I think Vegas is going to start looking uh, in the other way. And that's when I'll jump back to UCLA. But right now it's just too many points for me. Yeah, and really a one and a two seat. There, if you're a, still a two seat, you still get favorable seating. So I, mean, I don't, I don't think that's a, a, a big issue there with the one or the two. My right. opinion, other than just bragging rights. No, it, it, it's it's a fifteen seat. You're going to play a fifteen seat or a sixteen seat. Either way you slice that, it's not anybody. It's not going to be anybody to just you know drop the whole. You got to get your whole scout report ready. It's going. That's not going to be like that. So. If, if they were playing for, you know, like a six or a seven, eight, a nine, where you really need to know where you're at, but a one or a two, like, as long as you're one through four, I think you're fine. Yeah, because they take care of you as far as seating or as far as regionally, right? You end up in, in the West Coast, so the fans will be able to travel close. It won't be a long fight for them. So, exactly. I see you there. So, it's Colorado. They got pretty much win out here. Uh, and and uh, sometimes we see those teams, right? Two games, three games uh, over 500. They make that crazy run. And so, it's not out of the realm of possibility. Colorado plus the nine against UCLA. What do you got? Yeah, I mean, they're playing their best basketball right now. They're playing their best basketball right now. And two weeks ago they should have beat them in at home it just feels like that colorado spot so go ahead and take them with the nine here all right colorado plus nine against ucla uh this one will have a start time here 3 p.m eastern time which is noon noon vegas time so that's kind of an early start for these kids here on uh, over on pac 12 network all right collins let's take a look over at tony's picks.com for for action here on the thursday of course uh, we've got lots happening uh, uh, as well a uh, tournament action here on thursday as well as uh nba and nhl what do you have going on over at tony's picks or expect to have over at the site yeah, so we're, we're probably going to be uh, pretty basketball heavy still. Um, you know, we are still in that NBA. I'm, I'm still NBA heavy right now. Uh, college basketball, we're getting there. I, I kind of wait and get heavy into basketball as soon as we start the NCAA tournament. But these, uh, these conference tournaments are a really good time for me to start getting feelers out on teams. 
So um, be looking for some NBA stuff tomorrow. You're probably going to see anywhere from three picks to five picks. I was eyeballing a lot earlier, which is kind of why I'm not giving anything out right now <laughs> for NBA. But um, I'm, yeah, I was eyeballing college basketball, and I'm looking at some of those later games. So I, I'm thinking we're going to have – I had ten picks out today. I'm thinking I'll probably have another ten out again tomorrow. That's right, guys. Again, Roy Collins Brown over at Tony'sPicks.com. You can find him over on the site. He's been doing great work over there. And of course, the Flashers records in the NBA. He's been doing great work here. 545 units of profit NBA over the last seven days. So keep an eye there on Collins Brown. So go ahead and get signed up. Uh, he'll have a long-term passes up for you. His uh, three, seven, or three-day all sports pass to get all of Collins premium plays for that period of time you select. When you go to his handicapper page, you can make that purchase. And of course, don't forget the promo code. You can save a uh, 20% off all premium pick packages when you use that promo code Tony T. At checkout, you can access Collins page by clicking the link in the description. Click the All Cappers tab and go ahead and get signed up and get that long-term pass. That's the best value right now. That. 30-day pass to get you all of Collins premium plays for the entire NCAA tournaments as well as those minor tournaments. You know they've been in action with those NIT, CBI, the basketball classic. He loves baseball, right? So the first week of baseball is included in that 30-day pass and we're paying attention to baseball, Collins, because we know you're a former collegiate athlete. Uh, you played, you, you, you were a player up there and of course, uh, keep an eye on some of the spring training, some of these new rules as a catcher, former uh, big-time catcher in, in college baseball. What's your thoughts here of, of, of what's going on? I heard Roger Clemens say that the pitchers, uh, were, they're, they're not going to become pitchers anyway. They're just going to become throwers with these new pitch clock. No, and I, this is what I would keep I'm going to keep it short and sweet because I could go forever on it if I want. If you, if, if you had me for that long, I'd go forever. <laughs> but I'm going to keep it like this. Look for somebody to break Ricky Henderson's single-season steal record. Not this. I don't know if it's going to happen this season, but if they keep this pitch clock in play, there's no way that it doesn't get broken. I mean, we saw Anthony Volpe, or Volt, from the Yankees. Uh, stole two bases and back-to-back -back pitches just because of the pitch clock. When you know the pitcher's got to come to the plate, it becomes that much easier for to time up the delivery. So I would really pay attention to stolen bases this year. Stolen bases turn into runs. So this it's going to turn this it's going to turn this uh, the whole MLB upside down. I think you're going to see a lot of small ball now because uh, the bloops aren't the bloops and the blasts aren't really going to help you when you can steal and get guys in scoring position rather easily. So. Be paying attention to some of these guys stealing bases. There you go. For former big big time college baseball catcher. <laughs> He's going to keep an eye on these rules. And uh, you want to think about that baseball when you get that one month pass because that'll be part of it with Collins Brown. All right, Collins, it's always great having your show. Continue that success and we'll catch up with you again next week. Yes, sir. Thank you. Have a good one. You got it, Collins Brown here on our segment here on Tony'sPicks.com. Guys, reminder, be sure to get signed up with Collins. Use that 20% promo code TonyT at checkout, and you'll save 20% off. All right, guys, we'll talk with you guys again next week.